you know, as a kid who was pretty different himself, I think that, you know, what I would tell people that are individuals out there is, uh, you know, you're the ones who inherit the earth um, and uh, believe in yourself and be patient and be as different as you want to be. Uh, you have every right to do that. Uh, and it may be difficult and lonely at times, but there is no greater privilege than owning yourself. You, you have bad days. And, you know, from the outside, people may look at my life and think that everybody's, everything's good all the time, and it's really just not the case. Uh, you can have dark days. It doesn't matter how well your career is doing. You know, there's all kinds of things that happen in life. But as far as creative dreams go, uh, you know, I remember uh, we had released the first song off our second album, and it bombed. It did terribly. It was called Attack. And, yeah, well, you should have requested it on the radio more, buddy. Uh, because nobody else thought so. And, you know, maybe there were other forces working at that time against us. Um, but I thought it was a decent song as well for the time. Uh, but it bombed. The record company wanted to drop us. They actually did. They called our management and said, we're dropping the band. Um, somehow... You know, they convinced the, the, the head of the record company, Jason Flom, the guy was in there, to come to see us one more time at Madison Square Garden. We were opening for Audio Slave, uh, and the crowd hated us, right? They hated us. It was just a, it was a, the crowd was largely there. It was made up of Soundgarden and Rage fans, a lot of older people, and they just were like, who are these weirdos on stage? Will they get out of here? Uh, but anyway, we played that show, and, and the president of the record company, who had wanted to drop us, he decided to give us one more shot. But that time was really brutal, you know? It's our second album. We knew if we got dropped, it would be very difficult to ever find a way to make music and share it again. This was way before, uh, uh, you know, iTunes. It was way before uh, Facebook, and it was way before YouTube. It was way before it was so easy to make and distribute music and share your work online. Um, you know, so it was a challenging uh, time and really dark, but I decided to direct the video myself. It was for a song called The Kill. They released it, and it changed our lives. So, you know, and that's, that story has kind of happened more than a few times in our careers, you know, and it's happened to me as an actor. It's happened to me as a director. I've looked at things so many times, videos that you guys see now and think, oh, that's pretty good, and just wanted to like rip my eyeballs out. It was so bad. Um, so I think the thing that we don't teach each other and remind each other enough of is that failure is oftentimes more important than success, and success is the thing that can actually make us fail. It's really important to, to note what the lessons are to learn in failure. And uh, it happens a lot. It doesn't feel good, but it's a necessity. I think I have an insatiable appetite to make things and share things with the world. I have, uh, you know, I'm compelled beyond a reasonable doubt to do what I do. I don't think that it can be a, uh, a reasonable or logical choice. I think at a certain point you're compelled to do it. It's too painful, too brutal, too neurotic of a path to take otherwise. Sorry, my mic is making noise. Um, so I think that that compulsion has to be there. It has to be something that you, you can doubt all the time, but uh, deep down inside you know that this is something you have to do. And uh, you know, I think I've dealt with some of the adversity, some of the challenges, of which we've had many. You know, I started a band and the world laughed at me, literally laughed at me, kicked us around, talked shit about us in the press for years, and still do. Uh, you know, but we hunkered down, we worked and we worked and we worked, we play arenas all over the world, we have the most amazing, brilliant, beautiful fans one could ever ask for, and we've had an incredible life as a result. Um, so if I had listened to the choir, to the chorus of everyone, I would have stopped. Because that's what people want you to do for some reason. Some people would rather kill your dream than see you succeed. I don't know what that is, you know. I mean, Ayn Rand talks about that as the looters, you know, we can debate her in that some other time. But, uh, you know, I think it's important to be 
uh, stubborn and to, to follow your dreams no matter what. It's so important to fight for what you believe in. If there's ever something that you wanted to stand up for, you know, I mean, look at us and follow our lead. It is absolutely necessary to fight for what you believe in, big or small. When I was a kid, on more than one occasion, I got in a fight with somebody in the schoolyard and the next day they were, you know, close friends. Uh, so uh, that doesn't always happen and it's not a great way to make a, a, a good friend. Uh, but there are opportunities for people to take some of their mistakes and make them right. Uh, and there's nothing more powerful than somebody who has made a mistake uh, to promptly admit it and to make amends. Uh, that can be an incredible thing. And I think a lot of people have probably done that, have had regret and have changed and have learned that what they've done is hurt other people and come back and said, you know what? Hey, I messed up. I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, uh, I'd like to make it right. So, you know, for, for people that have done that out there that have picked on other people and bullied, um, it's never too late just to, to stop and, and be like, hey, I'm tired of being the, the asshole here. Uh, today I'm gonna start being someone else. Um, someone asked if all of your dreams have been fulfilled. No, certainly not, um, but, uh, but many have. I've, I think that the really interesting thing about achieving some of your goals in life is you realize that dreams are possible and they're, uh, they're attainable. And uh, once you reach some of these goals, you're more likely to try to reach others. And I always tell people who ask me about things like this that, you know, uh, that you have a good chance at making some of your wildest dreams come true. Um, most people don't even try, sadly. Um, uh, most people um, try and then stop or give up. Um, very few people try and try and try or do and do and do and do and never give up. And those are the people that that ultimately succeed and win, and um, it's, I never think that I really have anything uh, special to offer. I'm just stubborn enough to keep um, walking forward and put one foot in, in front of the other. Even, even when I have a lot of doubt, um, I just keep marching forward and working hard. I'm Not to sound too much like no, Anthony I'm, Robbins. I'm tearing up a little. <laughs> but uh, you can do it. <laughs> Thank you. If you know, if the whole acting, musician, tech thing doesn't work out, you have good motivational speaking. Hey, track. Well, there you go, yeah. Deepak Chopra. Yeah. Watch out, buddy. Well, that's Coming exactly, for you. That's exactly right. I think in order to be an artist, you have to be committed beyond a reasonable doubt. If you to be a writer, you have to be committed beyond a reasonable doubt. That'll be the, the subtext, the subtitle to the the talk today. Mm -hmm. Committed beyond a reasonable doubt. And I think that when you take the road less traveled, you have to have that commitment. Um, and I think that you know. People may go to some shows for a party. I think people come to our shows for something else entirely. I think some people, and maybe I used to think once you got successful, you could, ah, you're successful, and it, okay, and now you can kind of just relax a little bit, and, but that's not the case at all. You have to pedal even harder. You have to work even more. Um, there are more opportunities that need more uh, time and dedication, uh, and in order to do them well, you have to uh, really, really uh, hunker down and do the hard work. But I've never been afraid of hard work. And I always tell people um, when I'm asked, and it's pretty often that I'm asked about uh, dreams and achieving uh, creative goals, uh, that I, I always believe that the, the bridge between reality and a dream is work. Um, and I always, in moments of despair and doubt and dark days, uh, focus on, on the work. I show up and I work and I work and I work and I work. It's fun, you know, uh, being in and in in making art in general uh, is about uh, bravery. It's about taking chances. It's about um, kind of walking down a more uncomfortable path sometimes. Uh, and uh, that, that I, I always challenge myself to do that, um, even if it's uh, being foolish. Mm -hmm. So where does that come from? I think it comes from a desire to create things and share them with people, um, to be of service. When I'm on stage, I really think of it as I am there to serve you. Uh, 
and not myself. I, I, I don't think I've ever heard the applause, and you probably know what I mean by this. I'm always thinking, how can I do a better job? Yeah. I mean, what does it mean to survive as a, as a musician? What does it take? You know, we, we, we make money, we make a living, um, and uh, it's a great living now. After, you know, we were signed in 1998. So we, we invested in ourselves, time, energy, passion, blood, sweat, tears, as well as uh, other things. And, you know, it took a long time. And now we have an incredible touring life. So the touring is really where most artists uh, pay the rent. Um, you know, there's, there's an accepted wisdom that artists really don't think so much about um, making a living from selling albums. But for me, it's never been about even making a living. It's been about passion. It's been about making something from nothing. It's been about sharing things with other people. It's been about creativity. And it's been about dreams. And that's what it should always be about. 